In America, there are 50 individual states that make up our nation. The power to govern is shared among different levels, including the national, state, county, and municipal governments. This division of the governing power is called a federal system of government. Each level has legislative, executive, and judicial powers. We are going to look at all three branches and compare these powers at all levels. But today, let's talk about the executive branch. The executive branch at each level administers the laws that are passed by the legislative branch and carries out duties or powers given them by the state or national constitution. The president is a leader in our nation. Governors are leaders of their states. County judges are leaders in their counties and mayors or city managers serve as leaders in cities and towns. Let's take a look. The President of the United States serves as our nation's chief executive. The President is assisted by the Vice President and because they run on the same ticket and are elected together, they are from the same political party. Both individuals have to use a residence in the nation's capital while they're in office. The President lives in the White House and the Vice President has a home at the Naval Observatory. Both are elected for a four-year term and are limited to two terms by the U.S. Constitution's 22nd Amendment. In Texas, the governor is the state's chief executive. The governor is elected by the voters for a four-year term and has use of the governor's mansion in Austin while in office. The lieutenant governor is also elected by the voters, but is elected separately from the governor. This means that they could be from different political parties. There are no term limits for these officers, so they can stay in office for as long as they are re-elected. At the county level, it can be a little more confusing because the presiding officer, the county judge, has both judicial and executive duties. County judges are elected by the voters and have multiple responsibilities. They represent the county by doing administrative functions and by presiding over the commissioner's court. For cities and towns, depending on the system of city government that the city or town has, the executive could either be a mayor and or a city manager. A mayor is elected by the voters, but a city manager is hired by the city council. All of the chief executives at each one of these levels is assisted in their duties by other people. At the national level, these additional offices include the members of the cabinet, the head of each of these executive departments, such as the Secretary of Defense or Secretary of Treasury, are appointed by the President and approved by the Senate. In Texas, most executive branch officers, such as the Agriculture Commissioner or Attorney General, are elected by the voters of Texas rather than being appointed by the Governor. The County Commissioner's Court is a unique feature in Texas in that it is not a judicial court but rather an executive body for the county. Every county has one, and it's made up of the one county judge and four county commissioners. They are responsible for policies such as maintaining roads and bridges in the county. Other officials in the county include the county sheriff and county tax collector. At the municipal level, there are multiple city departments that carry out functions for the city, such as the water, sanitation, police, and fire departments. One of the coolest parts about a federal system of government is that you have the ability to elect leaders at each level, the national, state, county, and municipal, to help administer the laws that are passed. So whether the administration of those laws is very big and national, or much closer to you and local, you have a voice.